get down to what we're here for. And I guess all of you all saw my video and you know I talk loud, so I probably don't even need this microphone. But I'm going to talk as loud as I can because I want this whole state and this whole nation to hear me. It is time for the law-abiding citizens of this country to get as loud and proud with their message as the left has with their lives. Now I tell you, we just had some, we just had some young folks over here in the corner over here talking and I was over here listening to them. And everything they repeated was statistics and this and that, all of it probably given to them by some communist, some leftist, some socialist. But let me tell you this, there's an element to this that everybody forgets and it's this, it's common sense. Yeah. <laughs> there's a common sense element to all this. The bottom line is this, whether you like it or not, the world is made up of predator and prey. Prey is defenseless. Predators are not. We can defend ourselves from predators because, because our God in heaven endowed us with the inalienable right to arm ourselves with whatever we see fit to protect ourselves, whether it be from criminals or a tyrannical government or whatever it may be. And the one thing that these children do not understand is the world is not made of rainbows and lollipops. There are people right here close to this state house that will cut your throat for a dollar. And they'll do it for sure if you don't have a way to defend yourself. They had better wake up and they had better wake up quick. They better crack open the Bible and right next to it, they better crack open a history book. And they better take some lessons from both. Because the defenseless always, they always end up at the, under the thumb of tyrants and despots. Always. You go back and you look through history. You look at Lenin and you look at Stalin and you look at Hitler and you look at Mao and you look at Castro. What did all of them do? They took the guns. You look at the British government before our revolution started. Why did they come here? They didn't come here to shut down a newspaper. They came here to seize the arsenal because they knew with that arsenal we could protect our freedom and gain our freedom from them. And that's exactly what we did. So again, these young people need to wake up and smell the coffee and realize that Second Amendment, if we continue to let it be diminished, it's already been diminished enough. If we continue to let it be diminished, the forces that want to will destroy it and wipe it away. And once it's gone, guess what's going to be silence next? It's not just your guns, it's going to be your mouths, your opinions, your thought. It's all going to be shut down. The only reason you have the ability to speak up and be a free person is because you have the ability to defend your freedom. And you don't defend your freedom with a pen. You defend your freedom with, at the point of a gun. It's always happened that way. We fight our laws, but we don't send our police officers on to the streets with law books. We send them on to the streets with guns because that's what it takes to defend our laws. It takes firearms. It takes weapons. And I'm telling you right now, folks, you can look at who's, who it is that's trying to take these rights away. You look at what they want to do. One of the things I always look at is this. Most of these folks think it's okay to murder an infant in the womb. They think it's okay to go in and take a fully formed human being, crush his brain, suck his brains out, pull his body out, and discard it like trash or sell the parts. So what does that tell you about me and you? If they're willing to kill the most innocent and defenseless among us, what do you think they'll do to their enemies that are trying to stand up against them? When folks like that tell you you don't need a gun, guess what you need? You need a gun. And then you look at, look at another issue that's going on right now. You look at our borders. These folks want to open up our borders and allow any and everybody to come here, unvetted, unchecked. Now, certainly there are a lot of people that are coming in this country for the right reasons because they're running away from drugs and crime and gangs and corrupt governments. But if we open up the door and allow those people to come in unchecked, guess who's going to be right behind them? The drugs, the guns, the crime, the gangs, and the corrupt politicians are going to follow them right up here. So when people who want open borders tell you, oh, you don't need an AR-15 for anything, guess what you need? 
Two AR-15s. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. One free chance. Now. There's something I left out of this that I, I would be remiss if I didn't say it, and I plan on saying this every time I speak about this subject. A lot of people say that our Second Amendment, our Constitution, gives us our rights. That is not the case, folks. They affirm our rights. But you make no mistake about it. Our Father in Heaven endowed us with those rights. To every animal on this planet, he has given the, the ability to defend itself. He's given the the bear has giant claws and the shark has its spines and its ability to swim. All of those animals have the right to defend themselves and feed themselves with the weapons that God has given them. But to man, what he gave us was the ability to make machinery. And some of that machinery is meant to be used for our defense. Now I want you to hear this, leftists, all of you, from the media to the ones in the government. You can come for my guns all you want to. You can come after them all you want to. But I am not given one inch. We don't need to give one dot, one tittle, not anything. Because I'm going to tell you what, folks, if you haven't noticed throughout history, gun control in countries has never happened just all of a sudden. It's always been on the slippery slope. And in this country, the leftists know all the guns, all the gun owners, all of you, me, all of us, they know that that's a giant elephant that they've got to overcome. Now, how do you overcome an elephant? What do they say? One bite, one bite at a time. But in this case, my brother, it's one right at a time. So we got to hold on to each and every one of those rights and make sure we don't give an inch on this second amendment. Because anybody that can't see what's happening is either blind, dead, or fool. They are absolutely trying to destroy our Constitution. And they know that the only way, the only way to take your rights away is to take away your ability to be able to defend your rights. So, folks, I'm encouraging each and every one of you all to stand up and be courageous and stand up for your rights. That's one of the things everybody thanks me for all the time. They talk, thank me for standing up with courage. There's a lot of people out there that's doing the same thing. And I encourage you all to, do, to keep doing that because this is a fight, folks. It's not just a fight for us, but it's a fight for future generations, for our kids and our grandchildren and their children. I want to leave my grandson the same kind of country that Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and every other man that's fought for our freedom left me. Now leaving you, I want to leave you with this. There's a controversial phrase that's going to rest sweeping the nation, so to speak. Our president says, make America great again. Now, I'm going to tell you something about make America great again. Somebody on my social media page asked me, when was America ever great? This is what I told them. I told them America was great at Bunker Hill, and it was great. It was great at Bunker Hill, and it was great at Lexington and Concord. When the families of this nation, the ordinary men and women, stood up and fought the mightiest army in the world to secure our freedom, that's when America was great. America was great at Gettysburg and Fredericksburg and at Tim. When some of this nation fought to put this nation back together and end the terrible legacy of slavery, America was great at D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge and at Iwo Jima when we fought the Japanese, the tyranny of the Japanese and the tyranny of the, the, tyranny of the Nazis. It was great at Fort Chop Hill and it was great at Quezon when we fought the communists in the Far East. The simple fact of the matter is this. America has never not been great. The problem is, the problem is we have too many politicians. We had one in the White House for eight years that try to hide the shining light of America underneath the rock for the purpose of extinguishing it. Well, guess what's not going to happen? That's not going to happen. We're going to shine our light and we're going to defend our light rights come hell or high water. Thank you very much. God bless America. Thank you. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't have time to uh, You prepare. have to give us your name. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Mark Robinson. I live at... That's right here in Greensboro. I've lived in Greensboro all my life. Uh, I didn't have time to 
write a fancy speech. I didn't have time to, you know, I didn't have the, the resource of an English teacher to sit down and write a speech with at school today and be, you know, bought over here or practice or anything. What I really came down here for is this. Uh, I've heard a whole lot of people in here talking tonight about this group and that group and domestic violence and blacks, these minorities and that minority. What I want to know is, when are you all going to start standing up for the majority? And here's who the majority is. I'm the majority. I'm a law-abiding citizen who's never shot anybody, never committed a serious crime, never committed a felony. I've never done anything like that. But it seems like every time we have one of these shootings, nobody wants to blame, put the blame where it goes, which is at the shooter's feet. You want to put it at my feet. You want to turn around and restrict my right, constitutional right that's spelled out in black and white, you want to restrict my right to buy a firearm and protect myself from some of the very people you're talking about in here tonight. It's ridiculous. I don't think Rod Serling could come up with a better script. It does not make any sense. The law-abiding citizens of this community and many communities around this country, we're the first ones taxed and the last ones considered and the first ones punished when things like this happens because our rights are the ones that are being taken away. That's the reason why I came down here today, gun show or no gun show, NRA or no NRA. I'm here to stand up for the law-abiding citizens of this community because I'm going to tell you that what's going to happen. You can take the guns away from us all you want to. You all write a law, I follow the law, I'll bring my guns down here, I'll turn them in. But here's what's going to happen. The Crips and the Bloods on the other side of town, they're not going to turn their guns in. They're going to hold on to them. And what's going to happen when you have to send the police down there to go take them? The police can barely enforce the law as it is. As what I see, we demonize the police, criminalize and, and, and vilify the police, and we make the criminals into victims. And we're talking about restricting guns? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that when the police department's already hamstrung? You're not going to be able to go down here and take these guns from these criminals. So the criminals are going to hold on to their guns. They're still going to have them. They're still going to break in my house, and they're still going to shoot me with them. And guess who's going to be the one that suffers? It's going to be me. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, it is not going to happen without a fight. And when I say fight, I don't mean shots fired. I don't mean fist thrown. I mean I'm going to come down here to this city council and raise hell just like these loonies from the left do until you listen to the majority of the people in this city. And I am the majority. The majority of the people in this city are law-abiding, and they follow the law, and they want their constitutional right to be able to bear, to bear arms. They want to be able to gun sh go to the gun show and buy a hunting rifle or a sport, or sport rifle. There are no military-grade weapons sold, showed, uh, sold at the uh, gun show. An AR-15 is not a military-grade weapon. Anybody that would go into combat with an AR-15 is a fool. It's a semi-automatic 22 rifle. You'd be killed in 15 minutes in combat with that thing. So we need to dispel all these myths, and we need to drop all this, all this division that we got going on here. Because the bottom line is, when that Second Amendment was written, whether the framers liked it or not, they wrote it for everybody. And I am everybody. And the Lord Biden citizens of this city are everybody. And we want our rights, and we want to keep our rights. And by God, we're going to keep them. Come hell or high water.